distinguished speakers, the organizers, and participants. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you all to this uh, Science in Sufficient Economy Theory and its Impact on Agriculture, Food Security, and Environment. Organized to honor His Majesty the King Kumipon Ruyate for his contributions on Thailand economic and social developments. The Faculty of Science, Mahidol University, has organized a series of lectures based on the application of His Majesty the King, sufficient economic philosophy, and how the philosophy could be applied to science and development. First, this is a very important event in the calendar of the Faculty of Science, Mahidol University. We are, of course, in debt to all the distinguished speakers who will deliver talks on the very important topics. I wish also to thank the organizer of this lecture series for their tireless work which made possible this event. Without further ado, I wish to declare this lecture series open and I wish all the success for the lecture series. Thank you very much. for sustainable forest ecosystem. Emeritus Professor Pilai Kunsawat is working at Thailand on reporting at the Department of Microbiology, Faculty of Science, Mahidol University. Her current project now is a biology and ecology of hornbills of Thailand and hornbill conservation village and also the design and installation of artificial nests for Hornbill in Thailand. She received a lot of uh, international and national awards. For example, in 2006, she is the, she is the first Thai laureate of the 2006 Rolex Awards for Enterprise from Rolex, Switzerland. And also the first Thai recipients of the of the 52nd Annual Chevron Conservation Awards from Chevron Corporations in the USA. And also for the National Awards, she is the recipient of the 2007 of Lucy Mala Medal for Great Eminence in Science, awarded by His Majesty the King for the Community. So now I think it's time. Please welcome Professor Emeritus Professor Pilai Kusala for her lectures entitled Horn View Research for Sustainable Forest Ecosystems. Please, Dr. Pilai. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Sakai Mungkunso, lectures and participants. It's my honor to be invited to give a uh, special lecture today regarding uh, the, in honor of, the, of our beloved king. Um, the topic today, uh, it, uh, you will see that um, in nature, it's self-sufficient actually. So this is go, go along very well with the philosophy that uh, the king has seen. So uh, I hope that at the end you will, uh, you know, you will uh, integrate all of your knowledge so that you can develop uh, this uh, self-sufficient uh, self for for the benefit of yourself and your country. So I welcome you with the call of uh, 
on you. Or it can wake you up. This is the uh, helmeted on you. Helmeted. In Thai we call Nok Chon Ki, which is the Jiao Ki, you know, it's performed at Jiao Ki. So it's just like you, you know, you hit the rock. And also very aggressive. So the title of today is How do you research and sustainability of forest ecosystem? Maybe you surprised that I am from uh, Department of Microbiology, but Hornbill is not a micro. Yeah, at, uh, at first, you know, I'm I'm uh, also interested in elephant while I'm a parasitologist. But my chairman, you know, he said that Eli, the elephant is too big for you, so keep you know, uh, Hornbill is still all right. So I started in 1978. So most of you may, may have not yet been born. Okay. So the outline today, uh, I begin with introduction, biology and ecology, population and genetics, threats and management, research and community-based conservation, and the conclusion. Now, first I would like to clarify the terminology in this context. Hanbyu research aims to disclose the secretive uh, life history of Hanbyu. It linked link it with uh, their habitat. And sustainability is aimed to put things back to balance, whether we can do it or not that, you know, you can undo. And then for us, ecosystem, in this context, we aim at the unreal habitat. First, the origin of unreal. Unreal has uh, been originated since around 60 million years ago. So it's, you know, uh, very, very ancient bird. And the, the uh, uh, oldest one that's still living now is um, the ground hornbill. You know, uh, we can, dead, we can uh, do the dating because we found the fossil in Morocco since around mid, mid EOC. And I uh, this one, the, our Asian one view, the geometric one view, can be dated to about 45 million years. So this is uh, what it looks like. Um, so this this one is look very much like uh, the uh, ancestor that's still like living and sister. Okay, so you, you will see that when you distribute only in Africa and Asia, in tropical Africa and Asia, that's the origin originate in Africa. But how we go to to um, Southeast Asia, uh, we hypothesize that why Indian subcontinent moving along toward the uh, mainland Asia and collide this. Then when India just close to uh, uh, this, this part of Africa and also this part of Asia, why Asia also moved down, right? So one view can cross from this to this. Now, at present, we divided hornbill into two families. View call BD. This is brown hornbill. 
only two species. And this one uh, nesting in a hole, but do not seal the hole. This one occur only in Africa. And then another another family is Eusorotidae. We have now 52. But uh, uh, currently, um, work out on uh, genetics. It um, can be um, classified into uh, 50, 55. Okay, but right now, so 52 altogether. So this is a, a you know, we, we make a play part. So 52 uh, can fit well in one deck of playing card. So you can play card and also recognize one view of the world. So uh, this uh, for our one view can be two jokers. So or 50, uh, 54 cards. Okay? So you, you can buy at the uh, one view research formation. For six uh, building B. One view is uh, very important for a long time and also have long been uh, involved in human culture and, and uh, art. So you can see that um, all of these. It's um, it, on Borneo Island, they believe, you know, the, the tribe believe that Hornville is the uh, vehicle, the transportation to bring the soul, the human soul, uh, so this is the uh, rhinoceros conduit. Uh, this is Philippines conduit. And you can see that uh, they also use part of conduit for decoration. It's a warrior from uh, Sulawesi. So you know Sulawesi, right? Uh, uh, or uh, city base, you know, in the former day. And also this is conduit land. So uh, the life the life uh, history of Hornville are very interesting. So they uh, uh, perform this dance to depict the uh, role of the uh, father bird, you know, admiration of the father bird that has very high responsibility for the family, which I will uh, tell you later. Why Hornville are so special? Because they are monogamous birds. Once they pair, they pair for life. It doesn't like human. Okay? And also, I will not gonna be for those who, the, the scientists who study on view. They may not be monogamous, but on view are monogamous. <laughs> and, uh, but mostly, um, they come in uh, black and white or gray or brown, but this is very special. We are very proud of the uh, rufous neck country that found in Western Forest Complex. So beautiful, this one. I said, this one, I propose this one is the, beauty, the most beautiful country in the world. And everybody agrees, those who have seen it, but very difficult. Now, you, you may have heard about the Big Five, right, in Africa. Do you know Big Five? No, the animal that called Big Five? Anybody know? Who knows? What's your name? Nobody knows about Big Five. Big Five, not United States, not those. It's the elephant, rhino, all right? Buffalo, lion, leopard. That's the real big five. Not the United States or the UK. Uh, but in the bird world or in the hunting world, I say that these are the big three. Okay, um, they, have, they are very large in size. This is the giant hornbill. This one, giant hornbill. If you measure from the tip of the bill to the tip of the tail, it may reach 1.5 meters. Can you imagine that? 
and the wingspan, nearly two meters. And they are canopy birds. And this is the bird that, uh, that uh, the uh, term hornbills derive from, the rhinoceros hornbill. So I will play, I will play the um,
have very long eyelashes. Long eyes, very beautiful. So the girl we can read. And the last, very important, female seal herself inside. But by uh, voluntary, not, not, not by force. The, the male cannot force the female to go inside the nest. Only she likes it. Only she wants to. And then she lay a red chick inside. But with the help or with the you know, dedication of her mate. That's why the male hornbill is highly Admire. It has, it has three glands. Very, this one is very interesting, which now we are, we are researching. The yellow here that you see is not from the, uh, not from the uh, natural pigment, but it's from the color painted from this gland. So we say that this bird know how to use cosmetics. Because before nesting season, both male and female, you know, uh, uh, will paint this color and green, you know, very nicely. So both will become handsome and beauty. Hmm? Now, uh, the Tonyu habitat in Thailand, you know, we are, we are very uh, lucky that we have uh, various type of Tonyu. That's why we have uh, we have 13 species of honeybees out of 51, uh, no, no, 31 of Asian honeybees, okay? And uh, the uh, evergreen forest is the main, the main uh, habitat for honeybees. But it's unfortunately, we could protect only about 18% of the forest out of the, uh, um, the, the goal, the, the target is 25%, but we can make only about 18%. Now, deforestation rate in Thailand is still, you know, uh, going on at nearly 1% per year. So maybe in one view of Thailand, you know, in a uh, bad situation, two species, you know, become critically endangered, nearly on the uh, black honeybee and rainbow honeybee, and then five endangered, four, four uh, three vulnerable, and three near threatened. So this, I, I, if I'm uh, emphasize on the national status determined by our own, not the international status, because we will know that our uh, our um, what the wildlife, you know, the situation of our own wildlife that has our own, you know, uh, genetic how the situation, so that we can plan for the uh, management for conservation. So we have a research site in three three uh, main. Main area. This is Khao Yai National Park, our first national park in Thailand. And the, um, the area is this, this much. And then in 1978, and until now that I you know, research one day. And then in 1991, extend to Western Forest Complex. This is the biggest forest complex. So we study in Hue Ka Tan, this is the, the area. And in 1994, I extended to the south to cover all 13 species. Okay, I have some basic questions, you know, uh, because I, at, at first I know nothing at all yeah, from the, being the parasitologist. So just where of blue one will be. Just like where the parasites breed. And then what are the three species that one will need particular tree or not? Yeah, so I mean, this is very basic. Okay? And then yeah, our team first started three. This is 
my, my partner, he is a, a mathematician from Meijo University in Nagoya. And then I grow up. Uh, I grow up. This one I'm still, you know, a baby. Then I grow up. So, so you can see that uh, the, the period of my research, okay? These are few works, you know, uh, that so many, uh, many kind of activity. We have to also to push the car, we have to, you know, run, uh, escape from the, the elephant, you know, so many things. And we collect data by, uh, direct observation. We have a blind. We have to hide ourselves in observation drive. So we have to build the blind. So it's uh, sometimes it's very dark, you know, in a cloudy day. Very dark sometimes we have to to uh, put the candle for taking you know, very dark. And that uh, you know it's such dark sometimes the bats come in and can you know sleep rooms inside Say, hey, that's not, not your place. You know, this is my place. Just hang, you know, to, to sleep there because it's so dark. Okay? And sometimes the uh, snake passing it through the fly, or the bird pass through the fly. One bird, you know, the, uh, it's called a three leg hill passage. It's called pong, 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 pick out, 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 pick and another one follow, yeah. say, just pass my boots, you know. Because we stay in the blind, uh, alone. Because if two of you run, you will chat and, you know, observe anything and also listen. And also, what costs so much uh, is to uh, find two people who have taken only one. Person. So it must be very good. And you have you must not be panicked. And sometimes you have to climb. To climb, you know, we have to climb on the tree top. Okay? And in the forest, in the tropical rainforest, the the the, the rice way, the, the platform way. So you have to 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 um what um, to aim at which branch you are going to jump to. If the wind breaks the platform, no, not that, not that, that bad. Here, yeah, the uh, our study area, 150 square kilometer, and later we uh, extend to another 200 square kilometer, and we have uh, all together about three more than 300 nests under observation, and we learn that. The question that my first question, you know, certain question already uh, answered is dipterol carpus, dipterol carpus forest, or three in dipterol carpaceae, which is a, a timber tree that after by those author. So that's why it's, uh, you know, a, a cut. And in, this is the uh, another uh, site in Hue uh, Katan. So the forest, the uh, uh, nest tree will be different. It's depend on the forest, forest type. In the Evergreen Forest, again, still uh, different covers, but not as uh, ready as the uh, high stock Maybe you, uh, you are not familiar. But in Thai, it's wow, oh, wow. And then uh, in mid deciduous forest of uh, in Japan, huh? Uh, we have uh, Theta Bellis is the Thon uh, Song Pong. Thon Song Pong or in uh, Cambodia. Cambodian is uh, Song Pong. Now, um, how do you begin their, their uh, family, uh, their love story of uh, whatever uh, by the courtship? So courtship feeding, you will observe, you know, when at the beginning of January, you start at the feeding season, you will see that the pair, you know, their courtship every, every year, every feeding season, it doesn't like human, 
husband after marriage never got cheap anymore. Okay, so this is the, uh, that's why the pair bond is very strong. And then uh, the male will seek for, for nesting home, nesting uh, cavity, which they cannot excavate by themselves. They have to look for the, that suitable. So you can imagine how difficult. See uh, how one your nest cavity is formed. So I gather that uh, this wood decay from guy because when the, when the tree is damaged, has a, a wound, then wood decay from guy infected and create, you know, because make a hard and butt rock inside and then enlarge. Okay? So these are uh, all created by woodpecker because woodpecker has capability in uh, digging hole. And then later, wood from die, you know, invaded and enlarged. So here, I also study uh, the um, potential of woodpecker in creating on your nest. And it turned out that this species of hornbill, the penthouse hornbill, need the uh, old woodpecker nest because 90% of the nest of this uh, species are in woodpecker hole. So you can see the, the link, you know, in, in uh, this forest. Or the cavity may be already exist, but the entrance is still too small for one view. You can imagine one view is very large. But the bee, the bee can pass through and make hive, right? So bear after a bee and open up, open the, the, uh, the cavity. You can see that the crawl there, climbing up. So here is the, the evidence of the bear that bite the tree open and heal that until the entrance is suitable for one view. So it is uh, on your nest. See, nest sealing, after I keep, uh, they, they, they found the suitable nest, then seal the nest by the female get inside, and sometimes the male provided her with some nesting material, sealing material. Now, uh, view feeding, this is the uh, method of feeding. So it, it's uh, easy for us to count how many, how many fruit that they take. Because they have very short time, just does like human, you know, very long time, you know. Uh, but, uh, so they have to pick up, they select, pick up the right one, and then arrange to the tip, at the tip of the bill, and then toss. So once it's jerk up, you can count one. One fruit in. Okay. And then uh, when it comes to feed, we go to one by one. Okay. So this is how we count and study the fruit. Yeah, the fruit. Uh, the plant, food plant, recorded more than 1,000, uh, 100 species. These are the uh, dehiscent in that uh, when it ripe, it crack open. It crack open. So it show the ripe. This is a co-evolution between the seed disperser and the tree and the plant. Okay, to show that, okay, now the time for you to take away and then you get the uh, uh, what um, the uh, nutrition in, in return. These are the fleshy ones in the kitchen. And also animals. So hornbill actually are omnivorous, but mainly feeding on food, uh, on plant, on, on, I mean on fruit. Um, here's some of the uh, um, proportion. The uh, darker green is fig, regional fig, 
and then in 1910, 19, we, uh, we got a Grant so that we can have GPS, so track by uh, satellite, so that must be bigger. Okay, this is the uh, uh, video that uh, Bruce showed you. พื้นป่ามรดกโลกโลกพยาเย็นเขาใหญ่ถือเป็นหนึ่งในพื้นป่าเกี่ยวไม่กี่แห่งของประเทศที่ได้แหล่งทับปีกแสนอบอุ่นให้กับหนุ่มเอื้อจากการทํางานที่ทุ่มเทอย่างต่อเนื่องและอุทิศตนอย่างไม่เหน็ดเหนื่อยในการอนุรักษ์นกเอื้อที่อาศัยอยู่ในพื้นป่าประเทศไทยของมารดาแห่งนกเอื้อศาสตราจารย์ดรพิไลกูลสวัสดิ์ทำให้เข้าใจถึงนิเวศวิทยาของนกเอื้อด้วยการใช้เทคโนโลยี GPS อุปกรณ์ระบุพิกัดโลกติดไว้บนตัวนกเอื้อที่อาศัยในพื้นป่ามรดกโลกแห่งนี้เพื่อติดตามการดำรงชีวิตของนกเอื้อในผืนป่าใหญ่กว่า31ปีจากผลงานการวิจัยและความพยายามของมารดาแห่งนกเอื้อทําให้ประเทศไทยได้รับการยอมรับจากนานาชาติว่ามีงานวิจัยนกเอื้อที่ดีที่สุดในเอเชียและสามารถกระตุ้นคนไทยให้หันมาตื่นตัวและสนใจการอนุรักษ์นกเอื้อเพิ่มมากขึ้นสนับสนุนรายการโดยบริษัทบลทอสมุทรและผลิตปิโตรเลียมจำกัดมหาเ
in the in the uh, in the storm year, you know, we lost a lot of, of something that we so we inspect the condition of those abandoned nests and then you can see that uh, you know our nest tree is number and nest loss, this is loss, permanent loss. And then uh fifty percent loss. And then bad nest that you cannot use. So this is only twenty percent of food of food nest. So if we do nothing, it will decline. Here, the problem that we found, the unsuitable that one you cannot use is in here. The nest floor sinking too deep because why? Because of the decomposition process is uh, continuous. So we just simply uh, fill the soil, but we have to climb tree, you know, we're using rope climbing. And sometimes uh, it needs 300 to 400 kilograms. Because you can imagine that the tree are very really large, so the, the cavity also very really large. And if it, it uh, sinks too deep, then you have to fill the soil for, for so much. Or the entrance, narrow or close, so you just you know cut it open, help them. Or like this, too slippery for the uh, for the for the bird to, to perch. So we, we uh, facilitate with the perch. So this is a uh, you know welfare that we we uh, help them. So they're very happy. Just come come to perch and feed. You know, no suspicious at all. How come this one? You know, last week he's still you know struggling, but then the next he can perch. So this one so it it uh, reflect that this one this species is very high. So adapt to you know accept what is available. We also uh, improve the the cavity, the natural cavity, which has never been used by on you before, but uh, we uh, we improve it. Yeah? And then now it's quite successful. So you can see that great on view, the chip of great on view. 55% come out from the, the, the nest that we improve and repair. Now, at the, this is at Budo. So we, we did you know, the same as in three of our research area. We also study the population um, when we, we uh, receive a big grant from Biotech you know, in the Center for genetic engineering and technology. So we study uh, the uh, uh, Hanbyu population throughout the country. And here in Kaoyai, you know, we get, uh, we, we got about uh, eight, no, no, about 20, uh, 20 Hanbyu four species per square kilometer, which is uh, maybe three times uh, more than what we uh, we uh, uh, visited uh, at in the early stage of our study. We also study the uh, genetic. You know, our team uh, can make the relatedness of type among type one. So you can see that the, this one is the, the oldest uh, white crown on you about 47 million years, and then uh, evident on you. And this one is a little younger. Um, we also study the uh, population genetics that is a found that the uh, population of great on view because it's wider uh, distributed. So I, I uh, pick up this species and it's the largest species. And you can see that the Aureo, uh, uh, average number of Aureo and also um, uh, what, uh, uh, heterogeneity see that it, it already uh, developed a spe specific gene for each uh, popula subpopulation. Here in Budo Mountain, uh, in the south where we have unrestricted situation of violence now still continuous. Uh, 
uh, you will see that the threat here, washing are very severe, very severe, and also uh, a forest destruction. So here the horn views. Month, we have a meeting to 
discussing about problem or whatever. And then these are the uh, data that we, we, we get from, from uh, our curators. Uh, and if the, uh, the uh, um, proportion of the, these two species compare with the uh, great on view in Kaohsiung, uh, it's quite And then uh, because of the destruction of the forest and also uh, illegal logging, so we have to establish the uh, uh, artificial nest, which is we have, uh, uh, we collaborate with uh, Silicon University to design from the uh, uh, design and product. Together with the villagers, so we set up about thirty meter high in the in the trees, and we have to uh, you know add here what we now use. Yeah, here the.
Now, uh, the, the significance of Hornbill. Hornbill are recognized as keystone species because of the role in the sea. It's also very important to maintain biodiversity. And umbrella species, because if you, you protect this bird, you can protect and uh, this is also uh, what reflects the health of the forest, so it, then it also recognized as indicator species. And captive species because it attracts the uh, uh, public attention. So let me give you this to see a uh, uh, clearer picture. If one, one chick that come out in June, one chick, and this was only one seed, one seed. Okay, the minimum one seed. So in year 2010, eight chick produced in 150 square kilometers. So you get 80 seeds per day, right? So 180 days remain for that year because in, 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 the, in the nest they cannot disperse, right? So you will see that more than you know 14,000 seeds. That allow only 5% of that seed survive to become seedling. So you get 700. You see, this is the uh, uh, very uh, efficient of one in this first seed. No, if this, this is the free, free service, no need for you know, budget to, let's say, grow the forest or whatever. Okay, it's also a symbol of love, faithfulness, and responsibility. Yeah? So this is the, you know, for the young. Okay, we have also um, uh, on Love on View Day. On every 13th February, if you come here, you will, you know, have, uh, you, you will uh, enjoy this on View Day. And also, we have publication you know, in uh, various types uh, of media. Okay, um, who conserve Hornbill and their, their uh, forest habitat? Who benefit? Local community, right? And urban community, national community, and later global community. So you think of that how? So this is a sufficient and sustainability. You, know, you have uh, uh, healthy forests. You know that forests are, the, uh, are our important capital of the uh, of the nation. So this is the uh, you know it's your choice which one you like to have. Now your choice.
thank you, uh, Professor. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, maybe also I have uh, like area for Hornbill. Yes. But uh, as you know, in many areas that maybe Hornbill live in my country, like uh, Borneo Island or Sumatra, we have uh, a lot of competition. Um, maybe in your presence it's about the local community, but I think we have one big problem. It's a uh, not um, not community, but uh, big businessman that um, takes our land uh, from the forest, uh, and maybe everybody know we have a problem about the uh, oil palm production that grow uh, uh, mm -hmm. and destroy. Yeah. So we not uh, actually, in my opinion, we not fight now with the local community, but the big community that destroy. Uh, my question is how you try to. Uh, how you approach this kind of businessmen to understand that how important our forest for the sustainable of the wildlife such uh, this one bill? Oh, sorry. Uh, in Thailand, we don't have that type of problem. We have, we have to deal with the community only, local. Um, but for the uh, the uh, um, what the businessman, uh, those. Uh, I think that's a real problem, the same as in Sabah and Sarawak, because they turn the forest into oil palm plantation. So I, uh, when I went there to help them, because I was invited to be an advisor and also to to do the, to help with them with the research in a workshop. So I told them that you have to get rid of those uh, people. <laughs> Maybe you talk to the to the terrorists. <laughs> 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 yeah, if uh, unless you uh, you have a uh, what uh, very strong uh, what very strong network, and uh, you have to have it continuously campaigned for conservation, make them feel ashamed. I'm not sure whether they because they maybe they adopt the. Uh, the uh, uh, rhino skin, so they will not be your You know that? Think face. Yes. So never be your chain. Alright? Yeah, you can, you can come and, and uh, discuss with me later. Okay? Uh, other question? You clear? Okay, no, no question. Huh? Yeah, I situation because in Kalimantan, yes. Yeah, I, I've been to uh, Sarawak and I went to the border between Sarawak and Kalimantan. I see on the forest only along the border and over there nothing at all. So Hanbyu cannot, you know, they cannot dig the hole and leave and uh, you know lay, lay the egg like Mario bird in Sulawesi. Um, so it, it's uh, quite quite a threat there, I think. So if you you have to scream, you have to scream, and uh, you know do a lot of campaign campaign. Okay, then uh, okay. Uh, I come from Nikahai University in Japan. Uh, and although my major is not similar with professor, but I have a question. Uh, everything has two sides. Uh, the, um, always I, I'm afraid uh, when we research something, uh, for example, the uh, professor's research field, um, you always uh, make uh, field survey uh, and use some methods to recall the data. For uh, for example, you measure the uh, size of, uh, and the weight of the bird. Uh, but I, I, uh, I think sometimes uh, you will um, make some injuries to the bird. Uh, so I, I, my question is uh, during this during your research, uh, 
who was uh, the worst effect to the bird? Ah, uh, uh, of course. Uh, you know, in in doing research, uh, yeah. you have to invest something, right? Yeah. To learn. Yeah. To learn, right? Sometimes you have to sacrifice. Yeah. But for for my research, I can. I'm happy to tell you that never damage any bird because we are experts on the, you know trapping and you know make a quick you you know how to handle birds so we are training the researcher around this area those who want to to trap on bill and handle or put the the radio transmitter or measure they have to come and train be trained by us. I think. Uh but I'm afraid of uh, how um, how uh, how do you uh, catch catch a home home deal home deal using misnet. You know misnet. So, uh, I I know. Uh, uh, when I was a young boy, I usually used that to catch the birds. But that night, mm -hmm. I think that night will. Make some injury to no, the birds. No, 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 no. We we uh we hang we hang uh, you know, hang the hang the net. to yeah. to stick and uh, yeah. Then uh, then one view will come in, right? Yeah. And then we have to we have to watch all the time. You will not leave the uh, one view, uh, you know, scrambling in so, so, so. the nest oh, and put out and we move really mm. quick. And if it uh, get it to um to to much scrambling, we have to cut. It. Uh, cut, cut so the we will not, uh, we will not uh, injure the bird. Oh, I think thank you, Susan. <laughs> thank you, Professor. Okay, thank you for your concern about the bird.